Hello everyone, this is RaySpace here in Kerbal Space Program 1.12 with real solar system and real exoplanets, very importantly. Real exoplanets adds other star systems to real solar system. And of course, I also have KSP Interstellar, which this engine comes from, the Daedalus engine. It is a fusion engine of some kind that gets 1.5 million seconds of specific impulse and uses fusion pellets. And I intend to make a ship out of this in order to get to another star system without any warp drive. Now that means that the Kerbals are going to have to hang out for a very long time because the closest star system is Proxima Centauri or Alpha Centauri. And that star system is 4.3 light years away or in the game right now 41 petameters. And so it sort of depends on how fast we can get this fusion drive to push us. And I ultimately aimed for 4% of the speed of light. So that means a trip of about 100 years. Uh, well, we have a rotating hab there that also I think from KSP Interstellar, I think, but I'm not entirely sure. It was originally supposed to be a particle accelerator apparently, but it looks like a hab to me, so that's good enough. Unfortunately, it doesn't have any crew capacity, so I also put some of my own modules up front to actually have crew capacity. And we're aiming for just four people on this. We'll scale it up later. But the life support required for just four people for 100 years is very high. And I wasn't trusting in recyclers to keep track of things properly along the route during time warp. And so that's why we have a huge life support tank. And I've got a reactor there for the Daedalus engine. It turns out it needed that. It didn't need a generator. So we have this Daedalus engine, but its burn time, even though it has 1.5 million seconds of ISP, is very long when we are trying to get something like 12 million meters per second. That's the goal here, to go at 12 million meters per second, which is 4% of the speed of light. And, well, there it is helping us turn. Yes, we're using a, a gimbling on it to actually turn us because I'm not going to have fusion pellet RCS. All the little tanks are fusion pellets. It's all fusion pellets all the way. Millions and millions of fusion pellets. So here is the full plume on it. It is a waterfall plume. But the engine wasn't working in time warp. Neither was the plume. And that's unfortunate. I, of course, I've I used the KSP Interstellar plugin for time warp with ion engines, but it didn't seem to be working with this Daedalus engine. Fortunately, Pekka came to the rescue. Pekka is a modder I work with, and Pekka made the Starship mod that I often use and has been working on a Persistent Thrust mod that isn't Persistent Thrust. There's already a mod called Persistent Thrust. It's uh, hopefully better than that. In fact, it's definitely better than Persistent Thrust. And so putting that in and configuring the Daedalus engine for it, which is just a matter of putting a very small module in, it started to work. So we could get thrust during time warp, even though this is a very high thrust engine. And so that's wonderful. So we continue on our way. And of course, we have to use fizz warp when we need to turn. And it has a very nice plume during that. And I turned towards the target, of, which is, of course, the Alpha Centauri slash Proxima Centauri system. Though I should have aimed for Proxima, I ended up aiming for Alpha. In real exoplanets, Proxima has the planets. Alpha does not. Al uh, for those who don't know, Proxima is uh, a star that encircles the Alpha Centauri s binary system. So it's basically a trinary system. But we usually treat Proxima as separate because it's so far away from Alpha Centauri. It's like 0.1 light year away. So, yeah. Anyway, I aim for Alpha accidentally. And so that's what we're headed towards. And I decide to accelerate to 12 million meters per second. We, of course, have to then slow down by 12 million meters per second. And it left us with about 2 million meters per second to work with to make corrections and also do any maneuvers once we got there. We are, of course, not planning to come back with this. It's a hundred year trip. This is going to ultimately try to settle in the other system and we'll have to scale it up so that we have a proper population for that instead of just four people. Uh, now, we're not carrying those four people right now 
because I was pretty confident that we didn't have enough life support yet. Uh, we only, I think, ultimately had 37 years on board this one. But again, I'll scale up and we'll make sure that that's all right. It's very dark along the way. The numbers are all a little bit weird. But we did get closer. I was able to see how close we were using the MechJev dialogue in the upper uh, left corner there. Well, not really the corner, the upper dialogue there. But the closest approach distance is not correct in that. It's basically just reading our distance to target. So as I adjust here, this is an adjustment burn pushing our retrograde vector to the anti-target vector. And then ultimately in the map view, it finally shows a line going towards Alpha Centauri and also a closest approach distance. So then I can refine it a little bit. So you see that there. But it's really only clear when we get within like a year or about 1% of the distance away. There it shows the periapsis and I push it towards Alpha Centauri and then stop the engine and time warp normally to get closer. At the border of the SOI with Alpha Centauri the game basically froze and I had to restart it so that's the thing that can happen. Also during time warp it's choppier once it gets into the SOI of Alpha Centauri so uh, it's it's fine when you're not time warping, but it's very choppy when you are time warping, but you can time warp in the tracking station and it's okay. So that's recommended to do, but then when you're trying to use the engine during time warp, you're basically stuck dealing with the choppiness. Anyway, so that is the situation as we get into Alpha Centauri SOI, which is where we are now, and I have to deal with that whole business. Now, there are other engines you can use. There's the Bussard Ramjet. That's another fusion engine with an atmospheric scoop. It even allows you to scoop other particles along the way, so you're basically refueling along the way. It's sort of like a air intake, if you will, before a fusion engine. Uh, that gets better efficiency than this one. Uh, it's about 2.7 million seconds of ISP compared to this 1.5 million. And then there's also the Radiant Drive Laser Core Antimatter Engine, which is even better than Fusion, and that gets 20 million seconds of ISP. Of course, there are a lot of engines that get less efficiency than this, but those are the ones that get more efficiency if you want to get there faster. So here we are uh, doing the final retroburn to capture around Alpha Centauri. And what I didn't fully remember is that uh, we are capturing around the Barry center of the Alpha Centauri system. It's a binary system, there's two stars, so the point that we're capturing around is actually the point that both stars orbit. And so the mutual center. And here we are making that capture. I had to sort of adjust my course because we were straying away from the retrograde marker. The a uh, plugin that Pekka has made can hold retrograde, I think, but I wasn't using that function at that point. And here we do get a positive apoapsis, which means that we have captured. And then I take a look at the map, and of course 29,000 meters per second sure looks like a capture-ish speed. And, well, that's when I remembered that we are orbiting the Barry Center and not one of the stars, and that I should have gone for Proxima Centauri because there's no planets in this one. So, good thing we didn't send any Kerbals to this one. Uh, but it was a good test. It took 110 years and 89 days to get to this point. I also decided to check how much Delta V would take to flatten this orbit. We have 884,000 meters per second left, so it's not hard as far as Delta V is concerned to do this. It turns out it takes about 27,000 meters per second, and in normal circumstances I would be horrified, but when we are packing 884,000 meters per second, it's okay. Current mass was 1,000 tons or so. So I decided to resize the life support tank for that 110 years, well, a little bit more than that, so that we can actually go to Proxima Centauri with some Kerbals, and let's see what the ratios are. If 
we need to scale up, we'll probably be scaling up everything in proportion. So it's good to know. And here that's 113 years for Kerbals. I have no idea what the 63 Ker Kerbal max crew is. Maybe the ring does have some crew capacity, but it didn't seem to. And in order to accommodate the increased amount of life support, we have to have drop tanks. We basically have them drop off so that we get more delta V, you know, staging. And so we get about 31 million meters per second like that. And that's good enough to be able to do 12 million, 12 million and have a lot of extra. Maybe we can go to 15 million meters per second even. So anyway, that's my first test of a system to get to another star system without any warp drive. And we will continue with further examinations of possibilities in subsequent videos. So with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.